we have H.R. 8380, the Prairie Band Potawatomi Nation Shabana Band Reservation Settlement Act of 2022, introduced by Representative Jesus Chuy Garcia of Illinois. Now I'd like to give uh, the sponsoring members of Congress the opportunity to speak on behalf of their legislation. The chair will now recognize the gentle person from Illinois, Mr. Garcia, for a statement on your legislation. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and the ranking member. For the past 200 years, the Prairie Band Potawatomi Nation has been fighting for their land back after it was unlawfully taken. My colleagues, Representative uh, Lauren Underwood and I, are seeking to correct that injustice with the introduction of H.R. 8083, the Prairie Band Potawatomi National Shabane Band Reservation Settlement Act, as a step forward in righting the wrongs committed against the Prairie Band Potawatomi Nation. This bill will seek to provide a remedy for the damages and lost rents to the Prairie Band associated with more than 170 years of being denied the use of lands by federal officials. We believe this le legislation will more than, is more than reasonable considering that the U.S. government stole their land and has been unwilling to compensate them for their loss or give them a new home for nearly 200 years. It would reaffirm the nation's ownership and jurisdiction over their land. This bill is an important first step toward restorative justice. It took us 173 years to get to this point, and frankly, Chairman, I'm disappointed in how long it has taken our government to fix this. Lastly, I look forward to working with Department of Interior and the Potawatomi Nation on the non-conforming amendments to switch from restricted fee status to a trust. I also look forward to working with the nation as they seek to attain a settlement for the damages assessed. The Prairie Band Potawatomi Nation is rooted in the community and they deserve to finally have this issue resolved by Congress. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield the remainder of my time. The chair will now recognize the Honorable Joseph Wupnick, who is the chairman of the Prairie Band of Potawatomi Nation. Mano Gizna Good afternoon, Chairperson Leger Fernandez, Ranking Member Obernolte, and members of the subcommittee. I am Joseph Rupnick. I'm the chairman for Prairie Band Potawatomi Nation. I'm a survivor of the federal Indian boarding school system, and I serve this country as a U.S. Army Cavalry Scout. My nation and I are descendants of the Potawatomi people that initially inhabited the Great Lakes area of what is now Northern Illinois, Northern Indiana, and Southern Wisconsin. Today, most of our 4,500 citizens reside on or near our reservation in Kansas. We're in Kansas because the Prairie Band Potawatomi people were removed from our homeland through the government's Indian removal policy of 1830 through a series of treaties with the federal government ending with the Treaty of Chicago in 1833, our ancestors relinquished ownership of five million acres of land in Northern Illinois. As part of that removal treaty, the U.S. Senate carved out and saved 1,280 acres of land located in rural DeKalb County, Illinois, about an hour west of Chicago. That land was owned by Potawatomi Chief Shabney and reserved for him and his descendants. I am one of them, and he was my great-grandfather, fourth removed. Although the 1833 treaty uh, expressly preserved Shabney's 1,280 acres of land, the U.S. government illegally sold that land in 1849 in violation of federal law while Chief Shabney was traveling to visit his family in Kansas. Since that time, we have dil diligently sought to restore our ownership and sovereignty over the reservation. 30 years ago, my mother, Mamie Rupnicki, intensified our efforts when she was our chairperson, which led us to buy back about 10% of the reservation from the uh, prior non-Indian occupants. 20 years ago, the U.S. Department of Interior twice reviewed the history of the reservation and concluded the reservation still existed, and it also concluded that the Prairie Band was the only tribe that is successor in interest to Chief Shabney. 
and it recommended that Congress act to resolve and settle our outstanding claim to the land. The existence of the reservation was re affirmed by the recent U.S. Supreme Court case, McGirt versus Oklahoma, which held that Indian reservation boundaries remain intact unless Congress expressly acts to disestablish them. Despite our efforts, 90% of the Chabonnet Reservation today is still occupied by non-Indian governments and non-Indian homeowners. Their deeds include language that subjects their titles to, and I quote, all rights, claims, or title to the descendants of the Potawatomi Indian chief name, chieftain named Shabona and his band, unquote. In July, H.R. 8380 was filed with bipartisan support to settle all outstanding issues associated with the illegal taking of Chabonnet's reservation by the federal government. We need this legislation to confirm our sovereignty and jurisdiction over the land that we own, to provide settlement to the economic damages that has accrued since 1849, and to clear the title of the local citizens and local governments. Although we would like to keep the entire reservation, our goal is to resolve all outstanding issues without resorting to decisive, costly, and protracted litigation with the residents and state and local governments. Our, our approach to redrawing the reservation boundary lines and allowing us to acquire new lands near the reservation is a win-win solution for everyone involved. Like Shabni before us, we have built very positive relationships with the local community over the years, we, and we want to preserve those relationships. We have spent nearly 10 million buying back our own land, and our economic damages for the lost use of land since 1849 have been calculated at 99.1 million. We seek a fair settlement payment to offset our losses, purchase additional replacement lands up to 1,280 acres, and remedy this historic injustice. We support an amendment to H.R. 8380 that allows this payment to be made upon enactment rather than a nine-year process set forth in the bill as introduced. We also support language that directs our land be taken into trust by the Interior Department rather than recognized as restricted fee. Thank you again for the opportunity to present this testimony, and I'm glad to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Chairman, for your testimony. Uh, Chairman Rupnik, I, I wanted to ask a little bit more about the economic damages that the tribe has incurred as a result of the taking uh, of these lands, because I know that's an important part of the bill. Uh, and you'd mentioned that, I know, I know the bill has a, just a, a benchmark figure of $10 million in it. You'd mentioned that you've done an economic analysis that puts the damage at over $99 million. Uh, can you talk about that damage and the way it was calculated? Uh, we hired a uh, global firm. It was Cl uh, Compass Lexicon that actually done the economic analysis on that. And uh, they looked at the loss of uh, use of land from... 1849 up until the present day, or actually uh, two years ago, um, when that study was complete. Um, we looked at you know what was available to us throughout that whole time, what should have been uh, given to us based on the use of that land and being denied um, the use of that land. Well, hopefully we can uh, right some of those historical wrongs. I, we're, that's what we're hoping yeah, for, too. I think, I think everyone is unified in the desire <laughs> to do that. The chair will now recognize uh, the gentleman from Illinois, uh, Representative Chuy Garcia. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I would like to address uh, my questions to uh, Chairman uh, Rupnik. Um, I want to ask you uh, the same question I asked Mr. Garriott. Uh, earlier today. Can you describe the process uh, that you envision to receive a final uh, compensation uh, for the land uh, matter of the Potawatomi uh, that we discussed earlier and that you referenced in your testimony? 
<clears throat> yes, thank you for that question. Um, the process that I would hope that we could come up with, and, and if uh, Congress would agree to it today as a fair and equitable dollar amount today, I think that we could uh, go ahead on and move forward with that. Um, I would hope that we wouldn't have to go through the department's uh, process, which would take and extend this out multiple months. Instead, we could work closely with the department and the tribe to come up with a fair and equitable amount, agree on that, and then get that before Congress, is, is my hopes. Uh, yes, and I, I echo uh, the remarks made uh, by Representative McCullum that we should seek to uh, accelerate and to expedite uh, uh, this process. Uh, these are uh, issues that have been uh, awaiting resolution uh, for so long. So your your point is well taken with me. Um, now, secondly, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, over uh, the last uh, few years, especially since uh, last year when the legislation was introduced in the Senate, um, are you aware of uh, any other tribe coming forward to claim ownership of the Chardonnay Reven, uh, Reservation? I am not aware of any tribe that has come forward since the bill was introduced in the Senate. And there's been uh, ample time and plenty of uh, public discussion um, for uh, anyone who might have uh, an interest or a claim to have come forth uh, during that time. Uh, would that be an accurate statement on my part? Yes, sir, it would. Uh, we purchased 129 acres 2009. If somebody wanted to make a claim against that purchase, they, they've had plenty of opportunity to do that. Okay. Uh, and could you just talk uh, once again a little bit about, uh, I think you uh, stated earlier, uh, that you've spent around $10 million to repurchase that land? That's typically the way things go, especially when uh, tribes are trying to uh, purchase land within um, a reservation. Um, folks that own the land know that there is some uh, culturally significant reason why the tribe wants that, and, and generally, tribes get extorted um, for those lands. And, and it's pretty sad that tribes have to go back and repurchase land that was given to them. Yes, uh, thank you for uh, emphasizing uh, that. Um, uh, those are all the questions I have. Uh, I uh, that concludes the are there any members who have not had their five minutes in recognition? We don't have any on the Republican side. So, uh, and I think that's.